It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to this elementary edition of Science Bowl. We're into the playoffs, our best competitors. Let's meet today's teams. First, from Avalon Elementary School, please say hello to Desri McCraw, Amina Vargas, and Ashley Nelson. And from Glen Arden Woods Elementary School, please greet Emma Greer, Ivy Antunis, and Vinay Rachakanda. And now, here are the categories of questions we use on Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. Here on Science Bowl, uh, science Bowl, our game board reflects question difficulty with the easier questions worth five and 10 points and the tougher ones worth 15, 20, and ultimately 25, the toughest question of them all. Both of our teams start out at 50 points apiece. No penalties ever for incorrect answers. And to the two rounds, we will have a competitor for Hollywood Elementary School and potentially the third of our four semifinalists in this year's elementary competition. We started with 40 elementary schools. We're almost down to our final four. Let's make sure everything works properly. Let's go to Avalon. Amina, try your buzzer for me. Thank you. Good luck to you and to Ashley and Desri. And nice to see you in your matching school uniforms today. Welcome back to the program. And Glen Arden Woods, which has won our championship in the past, wearing their matching blue shirts over there. Let's check out their equipment. Would you try your buzzer, please, Ivy? Thank you. Good luck to you, Emma, and to Vinay. All right. Are we ready? Yes. Very good. Let's have a great game. Congratulations for making it this far in our competition. May the better team win. We go alphabetically A before G. So, Amina, let's play the ball. Green things for five. Green things for five points. Teams, certain trees like oaks and spruce, if they mast, they produce large quantities of these, hoping that squirrels and other predators can't eat them all. <laughs> Glen Arden Woods, what are they making? Acorns. Acorns, that's right. But the squirrels, they got an idea of their own. They have a second litter of pups so that the oaks don't get away with it. A lot of those acorns do get eaten. Go green. Let's get physical for 10. Let's get physical for 10 points. Teams, the pH of the oceans is starting to fall, which means that the water in the ocean is getting more and more what? More and more what? Glen Arden Woods. Oh, it's acidic. It's Acidic? Acidic, absolutely right, because low pH means higher acidity, higher pH is higher alkalinity or basicity. All right, good. Green. Body systems for five. Body systems for five points. Teams, to learn a little bit more about your circadian rhythms, all you have to do is listen to the tick-tock of your biological what? Avalon. Clock. Clock, that's right. Your biological clock is always ticking. And... All the things we do during the day, the circadian rhythm. Good. Red. Zoo parade for 10. Zoo parade for 10 points. Teams, <laughs> if you want to survive as one of these charmers in India, you better be a pretty good amateur herpetologist. Glen Arden Woods. Snake charmer. Snake charmer? A snake charmer. Absolutely right. You better understand snakes or you're going to get bitten real fast. Go green. Dateline science for 10, please. Dateline for 10 points. Teams. Back in 1936, the theory of relativity predicted that there would be rings that formed around galaxies. Well, it turned out that those were like mirages. They looked like they were there, but they were not. They were a kind of optical what? An optical what, Glen Arden Woods? Illusion. Illusion, that's right. Yes, indeed. I think you knew that, too. Just jump faster on that buzzer. Come on, ladies, let's work together here. All right, your team. Go, green. 
Science potpourri for five, please. Potpourri for five points. Teams, the dim, scattered light from the sky just after sunset has the same name as this series of vampire romances written by Stephanie Myers. Avalon. Twilight. Twilight it is. Yes, good. Go. Zoo Parade for 15. Zoo Parade for 15 points. Teams, one of the most popular videos on YouTube last week was a video of a feline chasing an earth sign away from a family garbage can. I'll give you 15 points if you can tell me what animal was chasing what animal. Avalon. A cat was chasing a mouse. Or not a mouse, not a mouse. Good try. A feline was chasing an earth sign away from the family garbage can. What animal was chasing what animal, Glen Woods? A cat was chasing a bear. Yes, a cat was chasing a bear. And the bear ran away, but then he circled back and he grabbed that garbage can anyhow. Good. Green. Body systems for 15. Body systems for 15 points. Nice try there, Avalon. Body systems for 15 points. Teams, the black market something nobody likes to think about, deals in the buying and selling of organs that are used for what purpose? Glenard and Woods. Transplants. Transplants? Transplants, absolutely. Transplantation. If you need a heart and you can't get it the normal way, sometimes you can buy it on the black market. Imagine. Go. Green. Thank you, Vinay, for your assist on that. Green, please. Green things for 10. Green things. 10 points. Teams, if you, as a plant, are pollinated by the wind. You're not going to make these very flashy or fragrant. What plant parts are normally flashy and fragrant but need not be if you're pollinated by the wind, Avalon? Flowers. The flowers, that's right. They're as drab and inconspicuous as possible. Why waste the energy? Good. 70 Avalon, 115 Glen Ardenwoods, advantage Amina. Zoo prayed for five. Zoo prayed for five points. Team's family is no laughing matter to these African scavengers for whom family is very important. Avalon. Hyena. Hyena, the laughing hyena. You got that right. They cooperate as a team, very dog like that way. Red. Green things for 15. Green things, 15 points. Team's, your question is as follows White asparagus grows under dim light and lacks what plant pigment? Glen Arden Woods. Green. Green? More specifically. Chlorophyll. Chlorophyll, that's it. Thank you, Emma, for weighing in. Chlorophyll is what is missing in white asparagus. All right, good first round. Avalon 75, Glen Arden Woods 130. We'll be back with round two. Don't go anywhere. And welcome back to Science Ball. Six outstanding young people playing our game today. Let's meet them. Let's go to Avalon. Now, you might have seen these young ladies before. They were here earlier this season. The first year in our 24 years on the air that Avalon has participated in. What a splash you have made this year. You and Miss Alzate have really jumped in, and we're so proud of you and happy to have you here. Amina, tell us about your school. Where is Avalon Elementary? Avalon is in Fort Washington, Maryland. Fort Washington, just kind of off Allentown Road, I believe, down yes. there. And who's your principal? Our principal is Dr. Diane Bruce. Wonderful. And we mentioned Miss Mercy Elzate, who is your sponsor. She'll be out in just a few moments. Did you have any alternates on your team? Our alternates are Laundry Simmons, Jonathan Legrant, and Evan Gore, who couldn't make it today. Wonderful. We wish him well, because I know he's trained and practiced to be part of this team. Tell me a little bit about yourself, Amina. I know you have a, a lot that you do in your spare time, and you, you're a musician. What instrument do you play? I play the trombone. Trombone. And you aspire to go to Juilliard, the famed school in New York City. And she told me earlier she wants to be a triple threat performer. What does that mean? A singer, dancer, and an actress. Wonderful. And you do all those things now already, don't you? Yes. Wow. So you're just going to hone your skills. You have a lot of stage presence here on Science Bowl. I can see that you'd be very successful as a performer. Have you done any kind of uh, acting that, uh, that you uh, would like to tell us about? Yes, I've been performing in ballets and plays. And plays, that's wonderful. Nice to have you back with us. Desri, you also are a musician, are you not? Yes. Yeah, what instrument do you play? Alto saxophone. That's right, and you've done that for about two years. Yeah. And is there a, a, an orchestra at Avalon or a band that you participate in? Yeah, it's a band. Wonderful, great. What do you want to do someday? Uh, be an entertainer or an accountant. Wow, or an accountant. Now that's very interesting because a lot of entertainers have business managers. So 
you would not make sure that no one would cheat you. You know, you would be your own performer and take care of your own books. That's going to be a lot on your shoulders there. What do you do in your spare time? Uh, sing, play my saxophone, and listen to music. Wonderful. Ashley, nice to have you with us today. Young lady who wants to start a cooking school, is that right? Um, I wanted to start a restaurant. A restaurant, very good, all right. So, do you cook now? Yes, sir. Yes, and what kinds of things do you like to make? Um, I like making omelets. Omelets, yeah. Well, you can do an awful lot with an omelet, can't you? Yeah, have you ever made a frittata? Um, no. Frittata is like an omelet, but you put it under the broiler and it kind of bubbles up like a souffle. You know, it's kind of like a, a funny looking omelet. You can throw anything in there. What kind of food would you serve in your restaurant? Um, most likely I would food, um, serve like Caymanian food. Very good. All right. Nice to have you here. I love that ambition that you have, and you're playing a nice game here. Glen Arden Woods, nice to have you guys with us today. And I recognize some of them because I've been to their school in years past, and they do something there quite unique. It's a feast that involves the entire school, and all of you were participants. Uh, Ivy, what role did you have? I was a herald. You were a herald. So you were out there kind of announcing things, correct? Yeah. Yeah, and that was the Middle Ages, was it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was a marvelous performance. First of all, tell us who your principal is. Our principal is Miss Cecilia Jones Bolden. Yes, and she's a wonderful lady over there, and uh, I know uh, uh, everyone respects her. And the sponsor of your team is Miss Nancy Stewart, who has been with the school and the team for many, many years. And did you have any alternates on your team? Yes, we did. We had Donovan Harvey, Christine Pham, Anina Cummins, and Kaylee Held. Wonderful. And we'll bring all of them out with the wonderful Miss Stewart in a few moments so that you can meet them. And Ivy, uh, what do you aspire to do someday? I want to be a college professor in science in and get a few degrees in like botany and astronomy. Right. And the I, main subjects I teach. Wonderful. And uh, you told me you're a stargazer mm -hmm. and your dad has a telescope. So, yeah. boy, what a great match. I'm sure he's very proud of you and he sounds like he's a great role model for you, too. Mm -hmm. Benai, nice to have you with us today. Tell us why you wanted to be on Science Bowl. Because my brother did and I just wanted to do it, too. Yeah, all right. So it's a family tradition. I like that. What do you like to do in your spare time? Play piano, read video games, and play tennis and play chess. Very good. All right. And I asked him earlier what he wanted to do, and the jury's still out on that. I don't envy people of your generation. There's so many choices out there. To narrow yourself down to one, it's hard to do. But you're going to be successful whenever you do. I love how you play the game. Emma, nice to have you with you, uh, have you with us today. Uh, she was a madrigal in the feast, and your mom was there kind of leading the group, was she not? Yes, well, she did a nice job as well, and I know she's here today. She's very proud of you. Emma, what do you want to do someday? I want to go to college and Eleanor Roosevelt in science and tech. Right, that's a great program over there, and uh, uh, I'm sure you'll be successful whatever you want to do. What do you do in your spare time? I like to swim and read. Yeah, and you swim at the Greenbelt Pool. You swim competitively, right? Yes. And you do the breaststroke, and uh, what else? Freestyle and backstroke. Wonderful. All right. Have a good second half of the game. Our score is 75 for Avalon, 130 for Glen Arden Woods. Let's get back at it. The last correct answer came from the green team. So, Ivy, where next? Let's get physical for five. Let's get physical for five points. Teams, your answer will be a meteorological term. Listen, if you still want to do something and it's hard, but you decide to go ahead, you're said to throw caution to the what? Throw caution to the what, Avalon? Stars. Not to the stars. Good try. A meteorological term. If you decide to do something, even though you have reservations, you're said to throw caution to the what? Wind. The wind. wind. You throw caution to the wind. Absolutely right. Good. Nice try there, Avalon. Go, Ivy. Science potpourri for 15. Potpourri for 15 points. Teams, there are tiny microscopic creatures called rotifers that live in areas that are anhydrobiotic, anhydrobiotic, meaning they can survive even if there's very little what available. Very little what, Avalon? Water. You got that right. Anhydro, lack of water, a desiccated state. Red. Zoo parade for 20. Zoo parade, 20 points. Teams, scientists now think that the most sophisticated language in the animal kingdom belongs to these rodents that live in underground mazes and can jump up and tell each other if it's a coyote, a badger, Glen Arden Woods. Gophers. 
No, good try, not gophers. Avalon, these rodents that live in underground mazes are supposedly the most sophisticated in terms of animal language. They can jump up and down and tell each other if a predator is a coyote or a badger or a black-footed ferret or a hawk, where it is, what color it is, and how close it is. What rodent is that? Prairie dog. You got that right, the prairie dog city out there. Dozens and dozens and dozens of cousins they have. Good, red. Zoo Parade for 25. Zoo Parade for 25. Big one in that category, teams. Listen carefully. The world's largest weasel is this W-initialed mammal that is the mascot of the University of Michigan football team. Can you name that mammal for 25 points, Glenard Woods? Wolverine. You got that right. Wolverine for 25 points. And they are threatened by the lack of ice, just as polar bears are, because they can't hunt as well. Nicely done. Green. Science potpourri for 10, please. Potpourri for 10 points, teams. So many fossils have been found on the south coast of England that they are now naming that coast for this same period when dinosaurs dominated the earth. Glenarden Woods. Jurassic. Jurassic. It's called the Jurassic Coast now. Absolutely right. Good. Green. Dateline for five, please. Dateline for five points, teams. Lunar lovers are disappointed that President Obama says that as a nation, we are not going back to this heavenly body. Leonard Woods. The moon? The moon, that's right. Lunar lovers was your clue. Green. Dateline for 15, please. Dateline for 15 points. Teams, even though peas aren't the best subjects for studying this kind of science, the monk Gregor Mendel, well, that's all he had to work with. What branch of science was he's, he involved in? Glenard and Woods. Botany. botany? Bot no, good try. Good try. Not botany. Avalon, the monk Gregor Mendel worked with peas as he was studying what branch of science, even though peas probably weren't the best creatures to use. Study something. Study of animals. Good try. Heredity or genetics? Heredity or genetics? He was indeed a botanist, but he was studying genetics. Green. Body systems for 10, please. Body systems for 10 points. Teams, boy, our bodies are very strange. There are things in there that you never thought. There's a canal in our ear. Imagine that. There's a bridge in our nose. And there's a cage in our body made up of the bones. What bones? Glenard Woods? Okay. Ribs. Ribs? Ribs, the rib cage. That's it. Yes, good. Green. Let's get physical for 25, please. Get physical for 25 points. Teams, if you go to the Howard B. Owen Science Center in this county and go into this P-initialed domed room, a projector will show, yes, Glenard Woods. Planetarium. The planetarium, that's right. You will see the stars and the planets and the heavens arrayed above you as you lay back in your seat. Green. Let's get physical for 15, please. Get physical for 15 points. Teams, this strip of coiled wire that recovers its shape after being compressed is the part of the gas pedal that failed on the Toyotas. Avalon. Coil, coil, coil. May I refer to Ashley? Certainly may. Coil? Another name for a coil. Spring? That's what I want to hear. Good answer. Good comeback. Go red. Green things for 20. Green things 20 points. Teams, what kind of H initialed T is not made from tea leaves, but flower parts and roots and stems. Glenard Woods. Herbal. Herbal. Herbal tea? Herbal tea. That's exactly right. Good. Ivy. Um, Dateline for 20. Dateline for 20, please. Dateline for 20 points, teams. Back in 1796, Edward Jenner showed his faith in vaccination by injecting his own son with cowpox, thereby immunizing him against what other kind of ser very serious pox? Avalon. Chickenpox. Not chickenpox. Good try, Glenard Woods. Smallpox. Smallpox. Absolutely. Good comeback. Good. Green. Green things for 25, please. Green things for 25, big one in that category. Teams, those plants whose underground stems and roots live for more than two years are known as what category of plant? Glenard and Woods. Perennials. Perennials is what I want to hear. Absolutely right. Not annual, not biennials, but perennials. They come back year after year after year, at least two in a row. Green. Let's get physical for 20, please. Let's get physical for 20 points. Come on, Avalon. Let's jump back in here. Let's get physical for, did you say 20 points? Yes. 20 points. Teams at the Winter Olympics in Vancouver, all of those aerialists, those snowboarders, they are gymnastic. They are hot doggers. 
But Isaac Newton keeps them all honest because, Leonard Woods? Gravity. I figured out gravity. Gravity? Gravity. They have to obey the laws of gravity or the laws of physics. We would have accepted either one. Green. Dateline for 25, please. Dateline for 25 points. Teams, the Hubble Space Telescope has found on the equator on Pluto a white spot that is frost made of this odorless, poisonous gas that is symbolized CO. Avalon. Carbon dioxide. Ooh, not quite, not quite. Glen Arden Woods, this white spot, this frost on Pluto's equator is made of a gas symbolized CO. Carbon monoxide? Carbon monoxide is what I wanted to hear. Good. Green. Oh, Body systems for 20, please. Body systems, 20 points. Teams, lasers are still used, but so too is superficial derm abrasion, which people use to remove these pictures from their body. Leonard Woods. Hair. Not hair. Derm abrasion and lasers, Avalon, are used to remove these pictures from people's bodies, sometimes about boyfriends and girlfriends that they would rather forget. X-rays? Tattoos. Tattoos. Try again green. Science potpourri for 20, please. Potpourri for 20 points. Teams, what same word describes the soft part of your tooth and the soft, fleshy part of fruits? Leonard Woods. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Enamel? Not enamel, no. This same word describes, Avalon, the soft part of your tooth and the soft, fleshy part of fruit. I would like to refer to what do you think, Ashley? Ashley? Flesh? Pulp. Pulp is what we're looking for. Green. Two questions left. Which one, Ivy? Stop. Body systems for 25, please. Body systems for 25 points. Teams, this soft tissue that anchors and nourishes the fetus to the uterus is expelled as part of the afterbirth when a mammal gives birth. What is that soft tissue called that connects and nourishes a fetus to the uterus? Glen Arden Woods. Umbilical cord? Not the umbilical cord. Good try. Avalon, you can get these 25 points. Come on, ladies. This is the tissue, the soft, fleshy tissue that connects the uterus to the uh, uh, embryo, the fetus, in the womb there, provides nutrition, and is expelled as part of the afterbirth. The sac? The placenta. Placenta is what I'm looking for. Last, whoa, I couldn't get to the last question of the game, but it looks like Glenn Arden Woods has done it. We'll be back with a wrap-up in just one moment. Don't go away. And welcome back to Science Ball. Hope you enjoyed today's game as much as we did here in the studio. What a fantastic game. Our final tally is Avalon 125, Glenn Ardwoods 320. Congratulations to Emma and Iva and Vinay. What a job you did today. Miss Stewart, I know you're very happy with this team. Another step to repeating as county champ. And back there, look at all of our alternates back there. Say hello to Donovan and Christine and Kaylee and Anina. They're all smiles as they should be. I want to see some smiles here. You guys are so cool and calm and collected and smart and talented. We're so proud of you. Desiree and Amina and Ashley, what a splash you made for Avalon this year. You put your school on the map. Back there, I've got Montrese and Jonathan. He's smiling back there as he should be. And Miss Bossy and Miss Alzate, thank you for all the work you did and for being part of our game this year. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Science Bowl. Bye bye.